Hello, welcome to 2023 and to Mont Park Model Railway. Building Mont Park Model Railway, an older style DC powered layout, required a control panel for the point switching and power segments. The control pa panels were an integral part of the initial build around October 2017 and enabled the layout to be operational well before any stations or scenic features were present. Following is some of the decisions I made during the design and build of the control panels for Mont Park. The track layout diagrams on the panels use a similar method to that used on many Metro rail diagrams, such as the London Tube Map, that uses horizontal vertical and 45 degree lines. It does not necessarily show the geographic proximity of locations, but rather the relative positions of the stations, lines and connective relations. The control panel diagrams are designed on a two centimetre grid, which in most cases ensures there is a two centimetre spacing between the lines and between the switches. Spacing is useful for both panel operations to make sure that you don't accidentally knock an adjacent switch and also for spacing of the wiring on the rear of the panel. Very early on, I decided there would need to be three control panels, one for each area on the layout for Newick, Peterborough and Litchfield. This is in preference to a large single control panel in theory, each panel could be operated by a separate operator and also each of the panels could be located on a different area or a different location around the perimeter of the layout. One of the minimum requirements is the layout could be operated by two operators. For example, one control the main line and another the Peterborough yards. Or they might move trains between the three areas. It was only after many years into the build that I considered the simplified version of the layout that is essentially a dog bone layout. Seeing this helped confirm the three operational areas but also highlighted each area's operational complexities and functions. It also helped show that for a train to complete a full circuit or lap of the layout, it must pass through all three of the operational areas. To help ease the congestion of cabling behind a control panel, I decided to have a main distribution panel that was located under the centre of the layout. So in theory, it would be an equal distance to each extremity of the layout. The main distribution panels is hinged to allow it to swing down for works and then tucked out out of the way for normal operations. The point switching uses double pole, double throw, centre off spring return switches. This is in preference to having, for example, two push buttons, one for each direction. In essentially having the single switch halves the number of switches on the panel. Now, you could just as easily use a single pole double throw switch, um, but I just felt the double pole gave, um, ensured that the contacts were always good for making those point changes. Each power segment is controlled by a double pole double throw were sent off, noting that this switch does not have a spring return. The switches essentially have three positions, controller one, off, or in the center, or controller two. This allows selection between either of the two controllers and also a center off position for the ability to isolate a segment or district. Our Mont Park has a number of locations where there are crossovers where a train can be switched to be able to go from an up line to a down line 
and and the reverse from a downline to an upline. But to do that, the power on the uh, uh, adjoining section needs to be reversed, otherwise there'll be a, a short circuit. So to do that, I introduced reversing switches. Then that allows that section, its power, its polarity to be reversed, which allows the train to smoothly travel across those crossings. And to do that, we used a double pole, double throw switch that is either in either the forward or reverse um, mode of operation. There's no center off because that isolation can be done through the, the controller selection switch. Each of the three control panels has a sufficient, sufficient cabling or wire to allow the panel to be lifted out and swing up side down to allow easy access. There are a couple of cable ties to keep the wires generally tidy, but not too many, as having everything tightly cable tied in can often hinder doing changes, updates, or fault finding. So I said the, um, the cable ties are just there to keep it tidy and not for any other particular reason. Cabling under and around the layout is managed by cable ties that have a screw mount tag that can be fixed with a screw to the underside or frame of the layout. The cable ties are left slightly loose so that new cables can be added if required and occasionally helpful for cable tracing some faults. On Park Model Railway is a DC controlled layout for both the running of the trains and controls of the points and remote uncouplers. The train control and the point control are powered independently, so either could be converted to DCC or digital control without impacting the other. The DC segments are also the most likely to be DC power districts. There is a plan to upgrade or convert to DCC in the future. Well, that's all for this video and thank you for watching.